Art students, welcome back to another class. So let's get right into it. Today's lesson is going to be how to do or to, to add motion to your character. I want to break it down to its easiest component so you can start adding motion to your character. If your character is stiff, it's not looking like you want it, so this should help you a lot. So first thing I always say is that the body is just a puzzle. There's just pieces to the puzzle and you put the pieces together then you know how to draw the body. It's simple. It's, it's extremely simple. Once you get the pieces together and know where they go, it's easy to draw the body. Now the hard part is tilting and twisting the body or bending and twisting the body. So you have to know each piece, how it twists and it, it bends. So um, let's just jump right into it. Let's just jump right into it. All right, knowing the pieces, basically your pieces are, you, you have a lot of ovals, you have a lot of circles, you have a lot of cylinders, and I'm using a dark pencil so that you can see. And um, basically, that's pretty much it, this main three, and then you have your, your triangle, your, your upside down house, as I call it. You know, and then your fingers, basically, your, your palm is a square, your fingers are, are cylinders, your thumb is just the banana shape and you break them down so these are the pieces of the puzzle so knowing what they look like when you twist and bend them um that's the main part that's the hard part that's when you start getting into your your, your serious action poses so the circle is a circle no matter how you twist it or turn it let's look at this little thing right here this little i forgot what it's called anyway it's a circle and no matter how i twist it or bend it or turn it it's still going to be a circle this cylinder Okay, now it makes a difference when I twist it, turn it, and bend it. So you'd have to be able to do that. I don't have anything to represent an upside down house. So let's just use this little box here, which is a square. Same thing. Once you start twisting and turning and you're seeing the tops and the bottoms and the side, that's what you have to work with. What is in this? Anyway, it's been so long since I even opened that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I wanted to draw... A figure, a figure, always, always got to draw the figure. So first thing is, when you're drawing something, where's my little guy at? You have to see how it's going to be in your head. You have to see how that is going to be and how other people are going to see it. Let me get my little figure here so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. Here's your character, whether it be a male or female. How am I going to draw it? Am I going to draw it straight on? Am I going to draw it from the top? Am I going to draw it from the bottom? Am I going to draw it from the side? Uh, and then the angle that it's going to sit on. Let's see this ruler here. Is it going to sit straight on uh, solid ground, shall we say? Oh, am I going to twist that ground? I'm going to twist that ground this way. I'm going to twist it that way. So you have to think about what you want, how you want your, your, the viewer to see your drawing by how much you tilt or, or, or turn your character. So starting with the oval, let's start with the stomach first because that's, that's kind of always been a, a hard part for me back in the day. So if I'm going to draw a character, I'm going to draw my character and I'm going to try to do this fast. These are my pieces to my puzzle here. Putting, putting them all together. So if I'm going to draw a character and he's going to be straight on then I am going to draw the waist like this rectangle. I call that the tuna can because it's it's narrow like a tuna. Now, if I'm going to tilt that person right here using this here, if I'm going to tilt that person, if I'm going to draw straight, it's going to be straight across. Imagine a belt going across this guy's uh, waist. It's going to be straight across. Now, if I'm going to tilt that person, that belt is going to be round, just like say, let's just use this for example. Say so like this is a belt, this is a really thick belt going around somebody's waist, okay? Or it could be a, a whatever wristband going around my, my wrist, okay? Whatever it is. But if you're looking at it straight, it's gonna be straight across, just straight across. Now the second I tilt that, it's gonna start getting rounder. So it's like this, it's gonna take on that more of a, a cylinder shape. So. Whenever you tilt this guy, if I'm going to tilt this guy, it's going to turn into that more cylinder shape, like that. 
Now that's if I'm drawing straight on, I'll have this straight across. Now, when I'm going to start to twist and turn and bend my character, where my pencil go? I'll use the circle. I'll use the circle to take place, to take this place. Because when you're drawing a cylinder for the torso, you have this part cut out. This is where your rib cage, this is cut out naturally. So instead of me drawing straight across like this for the belt or whatever it may be, I will use the ball. All right, I'll just put a ball right up in there or a circle right up in there. I imagine a ball because everything like this is not quite a ball, but everything is going to kind of rotate on that ball or twist on that ball. Just imagine this, just a ball in this part. Just imagine the ball's not moving and everything just kind of like rotates on that ball. So if I draw this ball or this ball, I'm, I'm going to keep calling it a ball like this center line and then I have my abs on it and I put my uh, hips on it and the same thing with the hips when you start to do the hips same it's going to just be like this if I do the hips straight which is this if I tilt it over then you're going to see that cylinder again you're going to have that cylinder shape except you're going to see down here and you always leave room for your man jump. If you're doing a male or female, you always leave room down here. So same thing. The more I twist this over, the more of this opening I will see. The shorter this is going to be. And you're still going to have the room for your man junk, which is the same thing here. If I cut this out, you still see it. If I tilt this up, if I'm tilting it up, just like cylinder. Cylinder. You have to master. I'm, I'm, you know, I can't say it enough. You have to master these shapes. If I tilt the cylinder down, you're going to see the opening from the top. If I tilt the cylinder up, you're going to see the openings from the bottom. So if these are two openings here at the bottom where your legs are going to go, if I'm tilting that up here, this is going to become rounder and you'll see the opening. So it's going to be like this. It's going to be more like this, depending on how much opening I have. You could just you can still draw it straight like this because this is rounding off going up then you know that the body is going back. Now you don't have to put the circles here because regardless you're going to put the legs unless you're just going to draw some floating hips you know but just knowing that the more up you the more tilted up this goes the more you're going to see these openings to put those legs in there. Now, if I'm drawing quick and I'm drawing somebody like from an upshot, what counts is the waist or where the belt goes. That counts for the hips. Remember, just leave some space. And I'm just going to put my legs here, however I'm going to put my legs. So this is going to be round anyway. My legs are going to be rounded. So that's going to take the place of me trying to draw this. But this is what counts because this is what tells me that this person is leaning backwards or I'm looking up at that person. Now let's switch paper and let's continue with the abs that I was saying. So here is my torso. Here are the abs, that ball for the abs. And then I will say like this, I'm going to put my abs in there. So let me darken this just because maybe I shouldn't darken it, but I'm going to darken it so that we can understand what I'm working with. So I've got my torso right on top of that, which this is kind of going to go, it was kind of going to go over the abs, but just for the sake of this drawing, just imagine it's not. So it's going to go over the abs, just a little bit. Or the abs are going to tuck under this thing. It's going to be inside rolling on top because you have your circle, you have your abs on top, and everything's going to be rotating on top of this. Same way for the bottom. Everything is going to be rotating on top of that circle. So if I am going to twist the character, I'm going to do my circle. Well, let's do the torso first because I always tell people draw your torso first. Draw my torso. I'm going to do this. 
and I'm going to have my waist. I'm going to have my waist straight, right, just for the beginning, from for the be in the beginning, straight across. So of course, that circle is going to go down inside of that, like that. So now, if I'm if I'm going to tilt this character over, let's use this. If I'm going to tilt this character over, this line, these two lines are going to come close together. The hips and the, the, the bone structure here are going to come close together. So I'm going to start out by drawing like this. Then I'm going to say, where's my center line? I'm going to, the center line is going to be here. I still have this curve right here. So then I just have to make that oval fit that center line. So now this is stretched, or this is, you see more circle here. Maybe I have to do that with a color. Let's see the color pencil going on. Because I'm really not going to move this. I'm going to have everything move around it. Yeah, let's do that. So this is twisted there. Now the same thing, if I, if I wanted to, like, let's just say this guy's doing his little morning exercise or something. He's stretching. He's doing his morning exercise. So the same thing is going to go with this. If there's my center line, I always have that center line. I'm, I'm sorry for not mentioning that, but if I want to bring this over as well, the same thing, I'm going to have it roll right across. Or if I'm if it's straight on, I'll have that straight line like I did with this. I have that straight line. I'll just tilt it like this. My center line is going to tilt. And then I will this you see more of this the blue more of the abs remember the abs going to come up as, as a circle is going to come around so if I'm doing this circle which is the abs you have the straight on and these are your side these are going to be your, your your love handles right there if I take this circle and I twist it a little bit more it's going to be you know it's going to be rounded and then of course you have your your love handle right there which is just in there you don't have to draw that it's going to be round like that and if i did a profile on pencil this is what happens when you have pencils in your hand the abs are going to be here Okay, and with your love handles over here. So we're just working with that ball right now, that ball which is gonna be your stomach. So what was I doing? Okay, we had this. Now, if I am going to twist this guy, if I'm going to bend this guy over, come on, pet peeve when your pencils start rolling around. So like this guy is straight, you see this guy is straight. Now, if I'm going to bend this guy, like I'm gonna twist it, I'm gonna twist him and bend him you have a whole nother motion. So I'm going to have this as your stomach. This, he's still, he's still tilted over. And he is still, to, let's just say he's still tilted over this way. But now I'm going to bend him forward. Now when you bend the torso forward, the telltale signs for that is this collarbone right here. This collarbone right here. It's going to be straight when you're looking at the person, when you're like head to head talking with the person, it's going to turn into a V like this. The more he bends over and that head is going to come down into those shoulders. So the same thing. And of course, you're going to have this. You're always going to have this no matter where or how your character turns. So instead of it being so high up, it's going to come down into it. It's going to come down and you get more curve. I don't think you'll get any more curve, but it's just going to come down into that ball. You're still going to have this. And then you have the V here with his head coming in to play. Now, the same thing is going to happen if you remember that's going to go in. Same thing's going to happen if you tilt this up. So like he, the guy is maybe like bending over like this. So what we have here is this. 
and then this going forward and see how that head you see that neck that head is nowhere near the shoulders but when you turn it, it the head goes into the shoulder that chin goes into the shoulders like that and your shoulders are here do that again see bending forward the head goes right into their shoulders right down into that chest so same thing with this with the cylinder if you take a cylinder let's just imagine this is a cylinder the more forward that cylinder goes is my cylinder the more forward the cylinder goes the shorter this distance right here is going to become same thing with this if this is tall and you lean forward it's going to you see less length and remember that chin is going to come in so that would be the same thing with this if i if i tilted that up this is no longer going to be straight this and i always do this straight just for the fact that when I do characters, a lot of times I do characters, I have like a, a belt or something on them. And it just makes it easier for me to draw these things. When I learned, when I, I basically taught myself, you know, it was like that. I would always have straight, uh, the upside down house, which is the hips. And I call it the upside down house. If you were new, this shape here is just this shape here that's all it is it's an upside down house when we're young we always draw houses that's kind of like one of the first thing we draw houses and we draw a little stick people outside of the house and then we get good and we start trying to draw a chimney and smoke and maybe if you have a attic or something or another house there yeah so i just call it the upside down house because it's easier to draw things that you're used to drawing than it is to say, oh, draw a hip or draw a bicep or whatever. And it's like, what does the bicep look like? Bicep is just basically, you know, like an oval. We all can draw ovals. So you put an oval and something else together and then another um, cylinder right here and a little circle right here and a circle right here. And you just drew yourself a quick arm. So it was easier for me to just draw stuff that I knew how to draw when teaching. It was easier for me to say upside down house or like a tuna can or or whatever so here coming here this is going to be you're leaning it up so this is going to be round remember because you are now taking this shape and you're going to you're going to tilt it forward same way this take this shape and you're going to tilt it forward so if i let's just say this let's see if i, if I can do this If I take this upside down house like that, can you see that? Let's ink this. These are supposed to be my arms, but I'm going to use that just for you guys. So this is my waist. And it only worked going forward. This is my waist, my upside down house. And if I start to turn it forward, you'll see the opening, the roundness inside of that. So going forward you're going to see the roundness so if i'm if i'm leaning this guy forward and his legs are going to come forward you're going to see the roundness in here still a straight line and the more i i do it the more you'll see that roundness and the more of the opening you will see here since i drew that so dark but again if i am drawing just quick drawing i would never draw this because as i say my legs are going to my legs are going to be round anyway and it depends on how much using the cylinders again this is my leg use depending on how much my leg is going to come up if my leg, leg is going to come all the way up here i'll do an oval here's going to be my knee here here's going to be my other end you have your back circle your front circle is going to be my knee and then that's going to be my foot. So, but regardless, that's going to be round. That's going to be round. So I don't usually draw that. I'll just with, without doing that, I'll do this, this, make that even now. And then I'll put my leg here. So that me drawing that roundness of that leg is going to take the place of it, me having to draw these openings. But I mean, if you have to draw the openings, draw the openings that way you won't get yourself confused if you have to draw the openings all right fatal mistake now not fatal mistake but depends on your legs if this is one piece this is one hard piece right here this is one hard piece right here 
that's the whole purpose of me doing this um, video. This piece is not going to twist. This piece is just going to tilt and bend. Same with this. This is going to tilt and bend. This is going to do all the twisting. So this hard piece, if, I, if I'm looking forward, if I can see the opening at the top, I will not see the opening at the bottom. Fatal mistake here. What I did was I drew the leg. I'm going to draw the leg. If I'm going to draw the leg straight back, it's going to be like this. Because this is tilted forward, this is this whole thing is going to tilt as well. Same thing, example. This is going to tilt forward, this is going to tilt back. You won't see the openings. Only time you see, you see the openings, the plain openings, is if I tilt it upward like that. So, I'm thinking about putting my legs on. Now, you can tilt something backwards like this and then still have the legs come forward, which would be round against that anyway. So that's what I was thinking about that. But remember, this is like one P, one solid piece that does not move. This leg would, go, this other leg would go back. Some crazy way like that. And this is going to lean forward. And the person, again, he's going to lean forward. Remember, leaning forward, you're going to have that V. That head is going to be down. And then he can be running or whatever he decides to be, which would, that would be the back hand. This would be the forward hand this way, like that. So just remember, this is a solid piece and this is a solid piece. It does not twist. It will tilt and turn. But other than, you know, the stomach is the flexible one. So that's why I say I, you, ride, you have everything riding on 24 minutes. I tried to make this a 10 minute video, but yeah, right. Everything is riding on the stomach or riding on top of the stomach. They're just twisting around the stomach. A lot of times we'll consider the stomach as the one thing that's going to move and so forth. But if, if you consider the stomach the piece that doesn't move and these move around the stomach, you might have a better, um, better of drawing. What's the word I'm looking for? Better something of drawing. I hate when I do that. That one word will not come out. So let's draw a figure. And if I can think of something else that I might have missed, we'll work on that too. So okay, so here's here's my here's my what's this blue red red, red 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 will work. Here's my torso. I'm gonna draw the figure in a second. It's gonna be on top of this stomach. And then here is my <clears throat> my hips which are going to be at the bottom. Remember that stomach is going to go in. So if I have my center line here, and if I have my center line, I can twist my center line here. That's how it's going to be, or well, that, that ball is going to be there. And of course you have your glove handles right there. So it's going to be like that. Hopefully you can see that. Let's throw some legs in there. Now, as I say, if if this is tilted, if I'm looking down, you're going to see this and your legs are going to, you don't have to draw that, that, that opening, especially if it's down, because I'm going to put some roundness to my legs anyway, so you don't have to worry about that. So everything is going to ride on the ball. All right, let's figure out some kind of uh, position to draw real quick. Got a piece of paper. The yellow and blue is to keep my camera focused because it doesn't like to stay focused for some reason. If I if I zoom in, if I zoom out too far away, it just doesn't. It's hard focusing with my hands going in and out. All right, let's figure out what kind of uh, position I'm going to make. All right, let's do kind of, kind of a, a jumping type of position, something twisting like something Spider Man would do. <clears throat> First off, I'm going to start out with my torso. And I just said, start. you always start out with your torso. Don't start out with the thing. Because you start out with your torso because your head is not going to take up much room. Your torso is going to be the center of action, shall we say, with just a little bit of space for the, um, as I was saying about the camera, with a little bit of space for your uh, waist, or hips and then your legs 
but you don't want your legs to come off. So if you're starting with something else on the head first, your feet are probably gonna come off the page. Is it the, the camera's blurred or is my eye blurred? Okay, let's go with that. So I'm switching to red again. Um, yeah, okay, so, and I'm gonna tilt it. So I'm going to do my torso, my oval first. I am going to twist it a little bit. So I'm going to come bring it down like this. I, I'm just drawing them. So don't, 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 um, yeah, don't. So I'm going to draw this. My ball is going to be in here. The ball is going to be here. And then I'm going to do the hips. So this is going to come forward. So this is what this is about right here. This is why you have that, that V because it's going to come forward and the head is going to be in. This is going to come forward. So this is going to come forward. So this is going to come forward. So I'm going to, I'm going to go back. So I'm going to have this. How am I going to do that? Let me draw this before I, I um, go any further with trying to explain it because I'm trying to see the picture in my, I'm trying to see the figure in my head. That wouldn't, would that go back? That would go back. Okay, so yeah, this is going to go back because this is going to tilt forward. Use, use your figure. Um, it's going to tilt back because this is a curve on this one. It's, it's different. You're not going to be able to see it. So with this, I'm going to curve it back so that this is going to be more prominent. Like you'll see more openings here. You'll see these openings here because this is going to go back. And let me do it with a pencil so you can see a little better. So we have this. This is curving back onto that ball. These are going to be open. This is the crotch. So it's like that. So this is coming forward. And this is coming forward. He's crunching. He's, he's, doing, he's doing this, basically. So you see these openings here in his legs. But this is the way they have this is cut. It's cut down. But... For the sake of this video, if I cut it down, it would look kind of weird. So I'm just going to say it's going to go up. We're going to, once we add the abs and so forth, it's going to change anyway. So we're going to have this. So it's going to be coming forward. And just remember, you don't want to make this too big because a lot of times I'll draw when I draw quick. I'll make this um, too big, too long, not too big. And I'm going to put my head here, maybe bring it down a little bit more. Once I get the arms in, that's the hardest part is put it, when you put putting your arms and uh, legs in, that determines how much energy is going into your motion, into the position, motion is going into the position. Because if I just put the arms down like this and the legs down like this, it's like, okay, what is he doing? It could be just like flying because these are up. It looks like maybe he's, he lifted his shoulders up or something. So you're going to have to put the arms and legs in that right position to give that kind of under. a real fat cylinder. And whenever you tilt something so far forward, shall we say, you're going to see like the buttocks is going to come back or that, that, that little crack in the buttocks, shall we say. And then this one is going to be like coming this way. I'm just I'm just drawing right now for the sake of time because I, yeah, I was trying to make a 10 minute video, but it takes a lot to give information out. So this is going to be my foot and then I will fix this off camera. So we got this one up. Let's let's see what we're going to do with this one. Let's put this one just straight. Let's put the knee right here. So the, the only hard thing is once you start to really start adding the form of the muscle to uh, your body or to a body, the cylinder starts to take a different form. Uh, it's, I mean, this guy, he, he's, it's not, it's not really, really muscular, but it's more cylinder, but, and I can't show you on this guy. I'll show you on the big guy in a second. So let's just put this here. So in other words, the way the muscle starts to flex, it's going to take like 
you know, it, this this comes in just a little bit, and you would have that muscle definition if I was like worked on my forearms. So it's not going to be a cylinder like this is narrow and this is wide. So when you turn it, if it's like this, when you turn it to the camera, it goes and it takes a whole different shape and form. So same thing with this leg. So if I do this and I put this knee here and I put this part here, there's a calf there. And maybe I can put the foot down. Like he could have jumped over a wall or something. He just he just leaped over something in my wall or whatever. And he's about to get the bad guy. Now, what I can do here is I can bring this in and bring it down a little bit more to make it a little more extreme. When you try to draw stuff to to the to the nth degree, you want to push it the envelope as far as you can. You want to take this arm and push it back, man. I'm getting into a whole new 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 thing now. That could be that could be another video. You want to take this arm and you want to push this thing all the way back as far as back as it could possibly go to to give it more of that more dynamic feel but that's it that's for a whole nother another video right there so I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm gonna put my arm back I'm going to put my arm back if I can get it back to where it was how did I have it like this and like this but it's going backwards it's going back behind him so why is this coming forward open you can, if you can crawl through it you're going back put it that way so if you can crawl through that hole you're going back so that, why did I have this guy going forward I don't know why I had this guy going forward <clears throat> part of the jump Brian part of the jump so you see that you crawl if you crawling through it and you're crawling through that which makes it go back so that's the difference. If you see the hole, you don't see the hole. If you see the hole, you can go into it and you're going backwards. You can see the hole this way. No, you're still going to go backwards. So this is my thing. This foot is kind of wonky. And for the sake of it, I'm going to try to twist that down a little bit more. Get that foot just a little bit of turn, kind of like that is the front point. And you can do that with your foot as well, the, the center line to tell you where the point is. You just twist it over a little bit for if you want your foot going to the side, going to the front. Uh, but I said, I'm going to bring this down a little bit more. Let's just see what happens if I bring this head down a little bit more. Which would mean you would have more V. Probably less of that and less circle because that circle is going back. This part is going back, but it's still going to be there. Bringing that head down even more closer to this V. Gives him that little bit of extra off to it. So remember, this is still round. This whole thing is round. All of this stuff is round. This is going to be going up. This is up like this as well. If you couldn't see that, let me put some blue on here. Whatever my blue pencil ran away to, did it fall? This is the pen right, right here. So of course, this is coming down. So, and I had a mark. Let's use this one. Okay, I had this, this, this. So straight on, when it comes down, your circles are going to curve down. When it comes up, your circles are going to curve up. I've got so many examples for you guys to help you draw. So again, this is going to come curve around. This is all this stuff is a circle. This is that ball. And this hip is coming up as well. So this is going to go back. This is going to go back. Same thing here. This is going to come forward like this. This is going to come forward as well. This is kind of straight down almost. And this one is definitely coming forward. So let me get this big guy and show you what I was saying about something that I almost forgot about. <clears throat> uh, 
again with the long videos I'm going to try to get me some 10 minute videos out I was going to say something to show you but this and I it just slipped my head. oh the muscles the muscles these are cylinders so but when you actually angle I lost it for a second these cylinders are going to actually take a different shape like to say this leg here this leg is going to come up because it's a cylinder but if you throw this leg up and it's foreshortened what you're going to have is uh, the lighting is really really bad you're going to have these shapes it's going to take on a whole different shape because of the, the muscles they're going to come and twist around and what i did for examples go back to some of my old videos i just took this guy because it was probably the best um figure that i could find that was that had muscles on it and i took an ink pen and i just outlined all the muscles to help you guys to when i draw <clears throat> if i use this for as an example just to just show you guys how the muscles actually you know go in and out and these things get dirty really quick these get dirty really really quick and i, I bought a head finally bought a head a different color but i didn't care i just a head to help you guys when you when we're drawing figure dynamic figure so let me see if i can pose this guy exactly like this 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 thing is great i had about three years but after for a while for a while the joints kind of lock up and do what they want to do because it's a metal uh skeleton metal figure skeleton metal skeleton underneath this rubber so how did i have this guy's kind of like like this and it's always good yeah it's always good to have you know something to actually show you the, to give you the reference and i don't know i'm not a poser i'm not one of the people that can just do these dynamic poses with their characters but let's just say it's something like this bending this guy down a little bit more uh something like that okay the hands should be up this and it's kind of hard to get it show you in camera on camera something like that so you see this kind of turns into this v you know, this sucks back. This comes out forward. This is going to take a whole new shape. It's going to get wider because you're squeezing those muscles together. And you're seeing the bottom of this foot. This foot is down. Something to that point, you see this bicep coming out. So it's no longer a cylinder. It is a cylinder, but it's got more shape to it. And this head, of course, is going down into that chin. If I put his head up like this, it wouldn't be that dynamic. It'd be like he's looking up. He's like taking a... He's in the bathroom, he's, you know, so. But if I put it down like that, then he's still in the bathroom. No, <laughs> he's, he, could, he could have that, that jump point, but it's down and he could be looking down at something because he's above, he's going to be looking down anyway. But that chin comes into that chest, down into these shoulders. The shoulders are pretty much coming up to the ears almost, if you look at it, depending on the, the way I turn it. It's coming up to the ears, so yeah. If you can afford something like this, this is, I think it's still, a, it either, it's either still a hundred and some dollars or maybe it's 98 or something. Amazon, if I can remember, I'll leave a link. These things are just crazy, stupid, expensive. So, yeah. And so I'm going to cut it right here and I'm going to, to, um, draw this off camera because 43 minutes minus yeah, I, I, I hate myself for doing these long videos. Some people say they like them. A lot of people just don't have patience. And I guess those people that don't have patience will never become great artists. All right, so we're cutting to the finished product. All right, so here we are with the finished product inked and ready to go. So while I have your attention, I want to point out a couple things. When we get like figures like this and we draw from them, the one don't have or they haven't been able to make yet is the shoulders that are actually right see they always have this little ball or, or connection or something to the shoulders so people don't know how to draw shoulders especially when the shoulders go up and you know uh, and, and and in because it's not right this is the closest thing to shoulders that um, they have made and when you tilt the body up when you when you look over that shoulder forward when you start looking over that shoulder you see that this delt this is the delt right here it goes all the way to the back so when you when you tilt your character forward 
you're going to see that V, that little V right here that goes here and in the back. So the, the shoulder, the, the delts are separated. It has three little heads, three little muscles that, that make one. So, and they're separated just like I have it lined up. But the thing that I'm saying is when you raise your arm, it takes a different, it takes a whole different um, look. And that's something people have to work with are their, their delts, the delts, because these toys don't have that shoulder connection. So as I say, when you turn your character over, you're gonna see this, which is your traps. It goes all the way back into your back. And these, your delts, which go around, wrap around almost, almost to your third of your back, I guess you could say. So when you do somebody that's leaning forward, this is straight. Remember these, these shoulder blades are gonna be like straight across. When they lean forward, you're gonna come more into a triangle. Uh, yeah, a, tri uh, di uh, a V shape. And then you're gonna see around the back of those delts. So that's just something you're gonna to have to remember whenever you start doing a character that is leaning forward. So that's gonna be it for this video. I'm sorry there wasn't a 10 minute video, but in my head it was gonna be 10 minutes. But on paper, it turned out to be a lot longer. So I'm not going to ramble. I'm just going to end this here and say if you liked it, uh, if you're new to the channel, subscribe, please. And uh, if you um, give me a like, give me a like. If you learn something, give me a like. And one more other thing, your abs are going to be scrunched up. Your abs, when you, when you lean forward, your abs are going to be scrunched like that. You know, yeah, it's just, it's just something that happens. So, okay. Maybe I'll get into a detailed video of that later. All right, so that's going to be it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Keep drawing.